Well, welcome everyone to the Korea Society. Uh, tonight we have um, uh, Robert Morgan. We're privileged to have Robert Morgan here to uh, give some remarks and give an introduction into the work of uh, Lee Ang No. Uh, An Mas is the name of our exhibit. Um, you probably know a lot more about Lee Ang No than I know, but <laughs> he's one of the uh, Korea's most famous artists, and this series is based on themes of freedom and unification. I think I have that right, but if I don't, you'll correct me. Um, unfortunately, we, we did have another speaker, uh, but unfortunately he cannot attend due to illness. He tried to come, Elaine Carilli. He was a former student of uh, Lee Ung No and is a French American uh, sculptor. Um, before I just give a really brief introduction into uh, Robert uh, Morgan, um, I, for those of you who are repeat visitors to the Korea Society, I hope you're enjoying our new location. We've been here now for one year. Uh, for those of you who come here first, and even for repeat visitors, I hope you could <coughs> consider becoming the Korea Society. It's very modest annual uh, contribution that you make, but it helps support activities like uh, like this and exhibits like this today. Uh, one more. Um, uh, 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 notification or word. We have one of our board directors here, Yang Cho, who's uh, and and Odalette, who do a lot to enhance and contribute to our art gallery. And uh, Yang Cho is, in addition to being the head of our audit committee uh, on the board, he is the chairman of the Donghua Foundation. Um, so, just briefly on Robert Morgan, uh, who might. Uh, formally met for the first time just now. Robert is uh, was inducted into the European Academy of uh, Arts and Sciences, Arts and Sciences in Salzburg, Austria. Right, uh, which I understand is a, a very uh, rare uh, and distinguished honor. He's also a professor emeritus at Rochester Institute of Technology. So, Robert, the floor is yours. This is an extraordinary show, and uh, I'm delighted that you can all be here to see this work in the original. You know, so often we look at art by way of the internet, and we think we've got it. But uh, from my experience of many, many years, I can tell you that you don't have it unless you actually come face to face with the work. It's the tactile sensation that uh, Iuno brings to our attention. And I think his relationship to Art Informel, when he went to Paris in 1958, it became very clear to him that he was changing his style at that point because originally he was trained as a traditional ink painter and calligrapher. He was trained initially in uh, beginning in 1922, uh, and uh, for about seven, eight, eight years, he was in Korea learning the trade, or the art, I should say, of calligraphy and ink painting. And then he went to Japan and uh, studied Western painting, and uh, also learned the style of Japanese painting that was extant at that particular time. Now, he didn't go to, uh, to Europe until he was 51 years old, uh, which is quite extraordinary because nowadays, of course, artists go much younger to other places in the world, but in those days, it wasn't so common. Uh, however, uh, there were other Korean artists, as we know, Park Sobo, for example, uh, ha Chong Young, among others, uh, Yi Wan. Uh, they were all in Paris. As a matter of fact, Yi Wan stayed longer than anyone else uh, in Paris. Uh, but uh, anyway, Yi Uno was, uh, I think, a major figure, I mean, a truly major figure, in terms of trying to bring together the Eastern idea and when I say the Eastern idea, people assume often, and I'm talking about Western people, that uh, calligraphy and ink painting is simply a technique. It's not. It's an idea. And the idea 
has to be present in the mind in order for the hand and the brush to function. Otherwise, you don't get the key. And the key is the essence of what you want to deliver through ink. This is something that I'm sure you all know and you all understood. But what is significant about this exhibition, particularly the back room, is seeing some of these very early art informal paintings when, uh, when the artist was needing to move from his Eastern Korean perspective to something else. And he had a great deal of um, uh, force behind him in terms of doing this. And he really felt the mission of bringing the Eastern idea, the Korean idea, to, to Paris, which is where he worked. Okay, I'm going to just briefly rely on some of my notes to make sure that I don't make an error with some of my dates, but it won't be so tedious as you might think. Okay, uh, he was the author of two important books, one in Korean and the other in French. The one in Korean was written in 1956, and the English translation is Oriental Painting Techniques and Its Appreciation, which in a sense is the opposite thing of what I just mentioned a moment ago, but sometimes the translations are problematic. And then uh, in 1967, he came out with a second book, that uh, was published in France, it's, uh, sorry, 1978, and that book was The Art of Chinese Ink Painting. Uh, needless to say, in addition to the Korean artists that were in uh, Paris at that time, there were a number of Chinese, and they were very important fixtures in terms of the art scene in Paris in the 1950s and 60s. One of the best known was, of course, uh, Zhao Qi. Uh, he was there along with uh, other artists, uh, many of them quite famous, who were very supportive on behalf of Yi Un-no. Uh, in 1964, Mr. Li co-founded the Academy of Oriental Painting in Paris, and this was to expand the presence of Eastern painting in Europe. In this course, he taught basic principles of Eastern ink painting to students who were primarily French, including Alain Carely, who was going to be here with us tonight. But we will see some of his work when we move into the images. Um, these students were given opportunities to go with the artists to various landscapes around Paris and to learn landscape painting, which of course, uh, Mr. Lee was an expert in terms of Korean style landscape. And there was a marvelous show very recently at the Met where two of his paintings from that very early period were shown and they were just masterful paintings. And this is before he was recognized by the French painters. Uh, the critic, uh, critic uh, Michel Tapier was very interested and uh, you know, very interested. And uh, the style you can see in these paintings in the back gallery. Uh, it's a collage style at times. It uses calligraphy. It uses the Korean ideographs, but it has this enormous kind of fusion moving in the paint, in the forms, in the very diminished color that is quite extraordinary. Uh, to give you some idea of how important he was, he was highly touted by Hans Hartung and Pierre Soulange, two of the really great uh, Tashist painters. Tashist actually means touch in French, and so this idea of the touch is very much a part of the work of you know, very much a part of the work. Uh, the idea is to arbitrate the touch when you see it, to experience the touch. Now, I have to say, given 
the world that we're in today and why this show might be extraordinarily important right now. I think this is one of the most important shows in New York right now, because here is an artist who's saying, listen, we're moving into the virtual. We're moving into artificial intelligence. But what about the sense of touch? What about the necessity of human feeling? which comes from the touch. The touch is the basis of everything. And if an artist is capable of rendering a sensibility with touch, it can be extraordinary. Iuno is an artist who does this. These paintings are extraordinary. I can't stop looking at them. When I came up the elevator an hour ago, the first thing I did was disappear from my wife go in there and look at those paintings on that side wall. They are just extraordinary, okay? Now this is after he had been trained in the traditional way of both Korean landscape, which he knows the, he knew the history of. He was a master, absolutely a master. He was a master of his own art. He was a master of Koreanness in terms of how that was embedded in his sense of the key. Okay, uh, lives of artists are not always so simple. Sometimes they're difficult. And sometimes this can build character, as we say in the United States, but often people who suffer with these kinds of encounters have to really immerse themselves in themselves and become stronger in order to continue their work. And that's exactly what happened with Iuno. In 1967, uh, he was in Paris. He had just come back from Germany where he had visited his son, of course, Germany was communist at that time in the East. And the uh, Koreans arrested him, uh, imprisoned him for two and a half years. And uh, during that time, just to give you some idea of the extraordinary capability and ethics and honor this artist felt for himself and his country, he produced 300 works of art in prison. In prison. Think of that. Absolutely extraordinary. The French, when they understood that he had been in prison, that he had been taken out of France, the French government said, no, we want you know back. He is a great artist. He is one of your great artists, whether you know it or not. Bring him back to France. And they did. And he continued his career. And he continued to have very wonderful French students. I say French primarily, but there were other international students as well. He was an extraordinary teacher. Extraordinary teacher. And this is something that is often underrated in relation to artists but he was devoted to his students. Before he left Korea, he opened the GOM studio in Seoul, where he taught painting, which was his studio. And he lectured regularly at Hongik University. As you know, Hongik University is a major university for artists in Korea. I have lectured there myself, as well as at Seoul National University on seven occasions. And I'll tell you, these are great schools, and there are great students, and there's great faculty there. You know, I wonder often if Koreans realize how great this tradition of art is, even today. There are some magnificent artists I think I know all the living Dan Sequa artists. I have dinner regularly with Park So Bo and with Ha Chong Young. Ha Chong Young doesn't speak a word of English, but I love him and he loves me. 
okay? Because we understand each other. We understand what it is that we're striving to do in terms of opening up the possibility of a new sensibility in this very troubled world that we're in at this time. Ha Chong Yong is also a great man, in my opinion. Okay, uh, you know. Uh, I'm going to show you some images, and I think that will be helpful in terms of bringing the sense of art back into discussion. This is a photograph I chose because I think that it correctly delivers his character in terms of who this man is, his ethical presence, the fact that he is standing for something that is important, important, that he is not going to dismiss, that he is not going to let go. And what a magnificent portrait, uh, landscape, sorry, a landscape portrait, you might say. Uh, this is extraordinary, absolutely extraordinary. And this, as you can see, was done earlier in his career. But it's something that he was a master of. Now, some of the work in this exhibition, uh, you can see there is the calligraphic sense in the work in terms of the stroke, the touch, the feeling of the touch, which he wants to emphasize which he wants to deliver, by the way. The feeling of touch is so important right now in terms of art. And this art is so advanced in terms of giving us this sensitivity. How to deliver sensitivity in relation to an experience. This is what you know did so purposely, so perfectly. Uh, this is a painting that I was referring to. I was looking at this with another colleague uh, just a few moments ago. Uh, magnificent painting that is in the other room. It's a collage. Now, he had his first show at the Facchetti Gallery in Paris. Uh, I believe that was uh, in 19... Uh, I have to check that date uh, to get it right so that I don't... Ah, oh, yeah, the Facchetti, the first show, yes, right, it was in 1958, that's what I thought, but I just wanted to make sure. The second one was in 1967, which is when he did the collage works, as you see here in this uh, uh, reproduction of the actual painting, which is in the back. Uh, just wonderful um, bringing together of a sense of the uh, art informel, which was the French idea of expressionism. This is what the expressionist movement was called, art informel, informal, as opposed to not formal art, but informal, letting down the barriers of academia and allowing the experience of the artist to emerge. This is what we see. Uh, the configuration of these forms undoubtedly related to ideograms, but opening up into this sense of abstraction. And he talked about this constantly with his studios, with his students, how to create this magnificent effect of the calligraphic sign in relation to the form, in relation to the picture plane. This is one that uh, you have all seen in back, uh, where he is dealing toward the end of his career with the uh, people, uh, human beings, and he became so aware of the demonstrations in 1980 in Quanju, uh, which is a haunting memory for people that still live in Chonamdo in Kwanju, uh, but the fact that people made this demonstration, that people insisted on the right way, that people had the honor and the sense of justice to be Korean and to do what was necessary to do, 
these were extraordinary people that stood up for these values that hopefully we all understand at this point in time. There are values that should not disappear. This is a magnificent portrait of Ionu. And here he is doing one of the crowd scenes. We have a beautiful one in back, by the way. Just extraordinary, right across from the previous painting that I just showed you. Just across from this one, we have this one. Uh, you know, I have been to Korea uh, 18 times now. I was a Fulbright senior scholar there 13 years ago in Chonamdo. And I've gone to the sites and I've seen the spaces and I've felt the memories of this. It's extraordinary. And again, he brings the calligraphy into the crowd, into the people, because as Ellen Carroll uh, he wrote me a note this morning, he said, remember, Robert, that calligraphy is about ethos. That is, you express the eth ethical sensibility of rightness within the stroke. Okay? So true. So true. Uh, this is an extraordinary painting, and this is an extraordinary portrait of this great artist toward the end of his career. Okay. Uh, this is the artist with his students in Paris, and these are two of his students. I understand we have a student here tonight, which I'm very happy about. Uh, perhaps that will be a response to some of the things that I have said from her. Uh, anyway, you get the sense of the touch, the humanity, the delicacy, and the force that is present in teaching, in learning this exchange, which can be so powerful and so necessary to come back to consciousness in terms of who we are as human beings in 2018. We are not robots. We are human beings. This is the message of Iyuno. Thank you.